Hello students, welcome back to our discussion of uh, chapter 13. We're going to end this uh, chapter with a quick discussion of uh, counter trade and the different types of counter trade that's available. Um, so counter trade, um, alternative a means to structuring an international sale, financing it differently when uh, conventional means of payment cash, currency, are either costly or non-existent, um, used when the government may restrict the convertibility of its currency. So of course this makes it uh, difficult if the currency is not convertible, uh, difficult or even impossible for the exporter to get paid and for that country to, the importing country, to actually engage in international trade. So we're going to look at um, five different types of counter trade. Um, basically these are it's a range of barter like agreements. So there's some examples your textbook mentions the one listed here where Saudi Arabia agreed to buy 10 747s from Boeing with payment in crude oil discounted at 10 percent below posted world prices. Um, other examples um, A company Philip Morris, this is an interesting one, they ship cigarettes to Russia for which it receives chemicals that can be used to make fertilizer. Philip Morris ships the chemicals to China and in return China ships glassware to North America for retail by Philip Morris. So it's a you know complicated uh, transaction but uh, the uh, value of the trade going back and forth um, would be um, would be a key element to the uh, to the importance of that deal and understanding that counter trade basically um, occurs because currency is not convertible and you know countries still want to trade engage in some type of uh, trade deal so different types of counter trade the first one is a, a barter this is the most, this is the simplest. It's not very common. Um, it's a direct exchange of goods, services between two parties without that cash transaction. Some of the problems with this, with the with this barter, like with this bartering, is that um, if goods are not exchanged at the same time, one party ends up financing, in quotation marks, the other for a period of time. Um, and the second problem is, you know, you may accept goods as part of the deal that you do not want, can't use, or have difficulty reselling. Um, so barter is the most restrictive as you need to find someone that wants what you have and has what you want. Um, so it's a very difficult uh, process to engage in. The second type is a counter purchase. As it says there, it occurs when a firm agrees to purchase a certain amount of materials back from a country to which the sale is made. So this is a reciprocal buying agreement. The, a, a firm uses some of the financial payment to buy products from a specified firm or for a specified product in the country. It helps the importing country maintain its foreign exchange reserves. And there's some other reasons why um, it would want to engage in that counter purchase. The third type is called an offset. This is very similar to the counter purchase in as far as one party agrees to purchase goods and services with a specified percentage of the proceeds from the original sale. The difference as it says there is that this party can fulfill the obligation with any firm in the country to which a sale is being made. So for the exporter, this is more attractive than the counter purchase as it is it allows a greater freedom and choice for that exporter. Switch trading. Um, this uses a specialized um, third party that buys counter purchase credits or you know that contractual obligation for the exporter. Uh, to use its counter purchase or offset. The third party then sells those obligations to another firm from any country 
that is looking perhaps to engage in trade with um, that original importing country. Uh, perhaps they can make better use of the goods or services um, that uh, you know that original exporter does not want. Um, so it would be, you know, the various um, obligations defined in the that counter purchase or offset um, original agreement. So switch trading, basically you're buying someone's um, obligation to purchase something from a country and then you sell it to someone else who, who may want to purchase goods or services from that, uh, from that original country. Buybacks, as it uh, states there, um, occurs when that firm builds a plant in a country or supplies technology, equipment, training or other services and then agrees in, uh, in terms of in a form of payment to take a percentage of the plant's output as payment for the contract or partial payment for the contract. So if you're producing a factory, we're going to take some of your product back until that obligation has been met. So there are various pros and cons for counter trade. Um, a couple of the pros, reasons for counter trade is that enables transactions to occur with countries that have non-convertible currencies. And uh, second uh, pro, as your textbook outlines, is that it could be a marketing plan or scheme uh, or advantage. Uh, for those firms that are willing to engage in counter trade, they can market themselves as that and they can basically reach uh, new markets that uh, may, be, may have been off limits because of their non-convertible currency. And uh, you may put yourself in a position to be more competitive than your um, other people in the other players in the industry. Um, significant cons, of course, is you're not being paid in currency, and of course, that is what everyone wants. That's the easiest, easiest means of uh, for that transaction is to actually be paid in currency. That's convertible. Uh, another con is that it may involve poor quality goods um, from developing countries that the exporter cannot use but in order to um, to trade a product you basically you're um, required to receive various goods or services that uh, you may feel uh, you know would have a poor quality but you're stuck with them um, kind of thing so that con can be minimized by having that switch trading um, ability um, of course countries that um, aren't producing sufficient quality of products. Um, there might not be a market for any type of credit for other nations to deal with them. So those are some pros and cons of counter trade. And uh, that is it for uh, chapter 13 and for the material covered in this course.